Welcome to A Chapter A Day. My name is Abraham Moreno. I'm glad you're joining us through this journey uh, as we study God's Word. The main goal of this very video series is to help you get into the Word of God daily. Welcome to A Chapter A Day. My name is Abraham Moreno. I'm glad you're joining us through this journey uh, as we study God's Word. The main goal of this very video series is to help you get into the Word of God daily. For Christian spiritual growth, two main components are necessary. Prayer and spending time in God's Word. The greatest challenge for most believers is to spend time in God's Word daily. Now, this series is intended to help you develop an appetite for God's Word and please understand not to replace it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if the Lord is encouraging you through His Word. And of course, don't do it for me, do it for His Word. Now, we're starting in the Gospel of Matthew. We have come to chapter 5. But before we begin, here are some insights about this chapter. It begins with, this is the area where we begin the Sermon of the Mount. The Sermon of the Mount is, was our Lord's ordination sermon for His disciples. The theme is God's righteousness contrast, contrasted with the hypocritical righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. The sermon is not a second law with new commandments. It goes much deeper than the law because it deals with internal attitudes as, we, as well as the outward actions. It presents a picture of a, the truly righteous person and shows the spiritual principles that controls his or her life. Jesus opens up the sermon with a description of the truly righteous person from verses 1 to 16. Then he defines what sin is from verses 21 to 48. Please understand, and this is very important for us to understand every time we go to the Sermon of the Mount. You are not saved by trying to obey the Sermon of the Mount or any more than you're saved by trying to keep the Ten Commandments. Because they involve inner attitudes. The demands of the Sermon on the Mount are much higher, more difficult than those found in the law of Moses. Only the true believer in Jesus Christ can put the Sermon on the Mount into practice. So, let's begin with Matthew chapter 5. Five things to notice in this section. The first area can be described as citizens from verses 1 through 12. We enter the kingdom through the new birth. We are born into the kingdom, but we enjoy the kingdom by living for those things that please God the most. The world and the worldly believers who disagree with Christian descriptions of a blessed, a happy person, but the description is true, just, just, just the same, whether they agree or not. God majors on character, and so should we. Second thing to notice is where we have the contrast between salt and light. Verses 13 to 16. Tasteless salt and hidden light are good for nothing. Salt arrests decay in our world, and light banishes darkness. Salt is hidden, but light is visible. Both are needed in the world, and both must be given, uh, most of, and both must give of themselves and serve. The third thing that we notice is the worshipers, verses 17 to 26. If you bring anger to the altar, you cannot worship God, so get rid of the anger quickly. Angry feelings lead to angry words and deeds, and the result could be murder. The fifth thing that we notice is surgery, surgeons. The fourth thing out of these fifth things, from verse 27 to 32. Obviously, Jesus is not, is not suggesting literal surgery, surgery in your body, but the real problem is the heart. This is a vivid reminder that sin is terrible and we are better off maimed than whole and going to hell. Deal drastically with sin is the idea. And the fifth thing to notice is children of the Father, verses 33 to 48. What you do more than others. What do you do more than others? Take two. Children of the Father is our fifth section. What do you do more than others? We must measure ourselves not by others, but by the Father. This, ridiculous, uh, this includes our words, our responses to injuries, and our dealings with our enemies. 
It was Francis Bacon who said, In taking revenge, a man is but even with his enemy, but in passing, passing it over, he is superior. Why don't we open chapter 5 of the Gospel of Matthew. We are reading from the New Living Translation, and let's read it together. One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up to the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. Notice, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for, thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted, persecuted for doing right. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad. For a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted the same way. Verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, here's the application, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Don't misunderstand why I came. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writing of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappeared, not even the smallest details of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandments and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of the religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Verse 21. You have heard that our ancestors were told, you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot... <laughs> you are in danger of being brought before a court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. So if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple, and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and reconcile to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. When you are on the way to court with your adversary, settle your differences quickly. Otherwise, your accuser may hand you over to the judge who will hand you over to the officer and you will be thrown into prison. And if that happens, you surely won't be free again until you have paid the last penny. Verse 27. You have heard the commandment that says you must not commit adultery. But I say, anyone even who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery in his heart. So if, you, if your eye, even your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. 
It is better for you to lose one, uh, one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your hand, even your strong hand, causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than your whole body to be thrown into hell. Verse 31. You have heard the law that says a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a written notice of divorce. But I say, but I say, Jesus says, that a man who divorces his wife unless she has been unfaithful causes her to commit adultery, and anyone who marries a divorced woman also commits adultery. Verse 33. You have also heard that our ancestors were told, you must not break your vows. You must carry out the vows you make to the Lord. But I say, do not make any vows. Do not say, by heaven, because heaven is God's throne. And do not say, by the earth, because the earth is his footstool. And do not say, by Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Don't even say, by my head. For you cannot turn one hair white or black. Just say a simple, yes, I will, or no, I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. You have heard the law that says, the punishment must match the injury. An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. If you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat too. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. Give to those who ask and do not turn away from those who want to borrow. Verse 43. You have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of the Father, your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love those who love you, what reward is, that, is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. What a wonderful chapter to ponder about today. Perhaps you will encounter people who will say to you, Hey, can I borrow, whatever that is, your car for a day? A couple bucks for the evening. <laughs> I don't know. Jesus says, don't turn them away. But more importantly, he teaches us that we must deal with sin drastically. Don't excuse it. Be honest with the Lord and say, Lord, this is something I'm having a struggle with. Help me renounce it, get rid of it, and throw it away. I'm so glad you were joining us today. Don't forget to join us as we continue on chapter 6 of the Gospel of Matthew. See you soon.